Hey everybody, Dev here, and I'd like to discuss Frenzy. I'd like to talk a little bit about the rules themselves, and I'd like to show you a couple of tactics. Tactics that you can use against units that have Frenzy, and tactics that you can use to help out units with Frenzy. I used to think that Frenzy was a great thing, uh, but the more and more I play, I've come to view it as an, a negative a lot of times. It clearly is a double-edged sword. Basically what Frenzy does is it gives the Frenzy model plus one attack. Also, if you take a look at the rules there on uh, page 52, you'll note that if they're riding something, whatever they're riding also benefits from Frenzy. So you can give their horse or their mount an extra attack as well. Additionally, something that is subject to Frenzy is also immune to psychology. Now, I think they need to change immune to psychology, not how it works, but what it's called. A lot of people, they hear immune to psychology and they think it means literally that, immune to psychology. It doesn't. Immune to psychology means you're immune to fear, terror, and panic, and you can't declare a fleeing as a charge reaction when you're getting charged. So you're not really immune to psychology if you're immune to psychology. Confusing, I know. In 40k, there's a rule called, and they shall know no fear, which is totally different from fearless. Anyway, enough about that. I digress. In order to fully understand the rules for Frenzy and what I'm going to show you in these examples I've got set up, you need to go to Games Workshop website if you haven't already and download the additions to the basic rulebook. They're in two parts. They're the errata, frequently asked questions, and appendices. In here, they really clarify some things about Frenzy. Uh, one of the biggest, one of the biggest downfall of Frenzy is that if there's something in your charge range, you gotta charge it. Your guys are foaming at the mouth. They want to get in there. They want to kill. They want to hack and slash. So, by that logic, the greater something's charge reach is, the more it's negatively affected by Frenzy. If you got a guy with movement four, some foot sluggers, and they're Frenzy, well, their charge reach is eight inches. Versus, you got a Lord of Corn on a dragon, he's flying. I mean, he's got a huge, huge charge range there. So, things that are frenzied can be led around by the nose. If you haven't been doing this, I'd suggest using it. I've got an example set up. Uh, I... Okay, here's the situation. Over here on this side, we've got the Lord of Corn on a juggernaut. He's frenzied. And he's facing off against a unit of Chaos Warriors and some Chaos Hounds. Now this guy could probably obliterate anything he gets the charge off on. Uh, so let's talk about baiting. He's going to have to charge anything in his charge reach. Now setting this up is going to take some practice. You've got to have the same skill at, at guessing a range like you, you would with artillery. What you want to do is have the Chaos Lord there charge your 30 point unit of... Flat, of uh, Chaos Hounds. You don't want to charge your expensive unit of Chaos Warriors. So what you want to do is during your movement phase, he's already moved and people are kind of at that standoff range where the next move is going to result in a charge. You want to move your, your Chaos Hounds up so that they're going to be within his charge range. And if you still have movement left, what you want to do is sort of wheel them so that when he overruns, or if he follows after him, you're going to take him away from those nice juicy targets. So then you have your, your Chaos Warriors come up and you want them to stay out of his charge range, but you want them to wheel too so that he, they can get a nice flank charge off if for some weird stroke of luck the, the hounds were to hold. Now in this situation then, then uh, the rest of their turn's over, then it's his turn. He's frenzied. He's going to have to charge something that's within his charge reach. Now, if both of these units are within his charge range, he can pick. So that's why you want to set it up so that this unit is outside of his charge range. So he's going to have to declare his charge on these Chaos Hounds here. Now, they have a charge reaction. In this situation with this type of troops, what I'd probably do with the Chaos Hounds is flee. Have them run away. So hopefully then he, he, he fails his charge. And he's out here with his flank exposed. So the next turn, these guys can charge right into him. If you had a tougher unit, 
But if it's a tougher unit, do you really want to waste it on baiting? But if you had something like swarms or if you're undead and all your stuff's unbreakable, heck, uh, hold the charge. So he, he hits in there under the charge. Uh, he wipes them all out. He's frenzied. He's going to have to overrun. So that'll take him 3d6 inches off that way. And if you've wheeled these guys properly to meet his charge, he's going to be taken off in a direction where it's going to take him a few turns to maneuver around and, and get back in the fight. Or if they hold, then you've got this unit here ready to counter charge right on into his flank and hopefully break him, do some damage to him. So that is an example, just a general example of how you can fight against frenzied troops by using a, a baiting technique. You either have the bait and flee or the bait and hold. Okay, so now I've shown you one way of helping to deal with frenzied troops on the other side of the table. But what if you're the general with the frenzied troops in your army? I just let the cat out of the bag and told the other guy how to deal with them and abuse them. Well, now I'm going to show you a technique. This one's a little trickier to pull off, and I think I'm far from having mastered it myself. So if you've got any other suggestions or anything on how to make this work a little bit better than I'm going to show you, please feel free to make a video, put something in the responses. This is called screening. The idea is simple. If uh, your guys can charge something, they have to, well, put a unit in front of your guys. That way they can't charge. Sounds pretty simple, huh? Well, let's go take a look. Okay, for this example, the Chaos Hounds have switched sides. They're on the, the side of the general on the left here with the Chaos Lord Mark of Corn. And the unit of Chaos Warriors is now two separate and distinct units. So what you do is you put some uh, maybe cheap but still maneuverable unit in front of your frenzied unit. The idea is that they block them. The Lord can't charge because they're in the way. It's also handy if you're looking at facing any sort of missile troops, you've got this screening unit in the front too to protect your expensive unit of knights behind them. So it does have an added benefit. But now you really want to charge, but you can't because your own stuff's in front of you. Take a look at those uh, appendices and frequently asked questions. What you can do is you can declare a charge with the hounds and if that charge is going to take them out of the way of your frenzied unit, then your frenzied unit can charge, even though they're in the way, can still charge out. So it's, like I said, it's, this is trickier to set up. You almost have to have two units that both of them could charge. So the idea is then you have your hounds, you declare their charge first. Uh, technically, I guess frenzied guys don't or can't declare charges. This is really getting into some esoteric minutia of the rules. They have to wait until after all charges are declared and then you, you measure. Um, anyway, so you declare their charge first because chargers are moved in the order that they're declared. Then you measure with the frenzied guy and say it's your intent to charge this unit here because when it comes time to resolve it, these guys will be out of the way. Then you move your chargers. They're not in a tray. If I can... They come over here. Then he is free and clear to charge here. So advancing across the table, you have the benefit of the screen. He can't be led around by the nose by some cheap little unit. Um, and then he does have some freedom as long as you can get that screening unit out of the way to act on his own. Okay, so there you go. Hopefully we've learned something about using frenzied units and facing off against frenzied units. One thing I should have said earlier when I was talking about the baiting of the frenzied units, you want to be careful if you're using skirmishers to bait because the way you charge skirmishers is a little bit differently. The charging unit doesn't have to line up against the, the skirmishing unit. In fact, you have your skirmishing unit lining up against the chargers. There's this thing called a tactical wheel, which is probably the subject for another video, where the, the charging unit wheels into the skirmishers in such a way that, that if the skirmishers flee or if the, they overrun them, that it's going to take them into the next juicy target they want. So that can really backfire against you if somebody knows what they're doing with their frenzied guys and you try and bait them with, uh, with some skirmishers. So uh, there you have it. Uh, I hope this helps out your, your understanding. And I assure you, I have not forgotten about the Lizardmen videos. Hopefully I can get one out this week. Thanks for watching.